All right, so check it. Everybody is talking about Pelosi and how she's selling off these stocks. Now, I want to preface this with this has nothing to do with politics at all. This is not a platform in which I am trying to put political opinion out there. This is business. So I want to talk stock market and I want to talk money, okay? <clears throat> There's been a lot of speculation. It's all over uh, social media and everything. People are speculating, well, okay, these politicians... People are speculating that the politicians know what, what's about to happen in the stock market and therefore they're liquidating stocks in order to get out before it's too late, right? Um, and one of the big ones is Pelosi because Pelosi just sold off a big, huge, 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 massive portion of her portfolio, okay? Um, <laughs> she just sold off her Tesla, she sold off Tesla for a fifty or a five hundred thousand dollar loss, so she took a five hundred thousand dollar loss on Tesla. She took a four hundred and twenty four thousand dollar loss on PayPal. She took a seven hundred and thirty three thousand dollar loss on CRM. She took a hundred and fourteen thousand dollar loss on Disney and on Roblox. She lost two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. Okay, so when you look at that, you're looking at a lot of money that she lost, okay? She sold at a loss. Now, the thing is, is people are speculating that this means something, like this is significant because, it's significant because she was, like she's in on the end, right? Like she's in on what's going on and like she knows what's about to happen and because she knows what's about to happen, She's getting out before it's too late. Well, first, I want to tell you that there's several variables that are unknown here. Nobody really knows everything that's happening, okay? And nobody really knows her motives or her intentions. And now there are, there was, a, there was some people I did see that were speculating, well, maybe she's getting out because she's getting out because she can use it as a tax write-off. Well, the reality is you can only write off so much of, um, you can only write off so uh such a percentage during the tax write-off. Okay, not only that, but what she got out, I mean, she got out, like, I mean, we're talking, like, close to, uh, roughly $2 million. Roughly a $2 million loss. That's just the big ones that she sold off. Now, there's several aspects that you can consider here. First, it's all over the media, it's everywhere, that the stock market is in a decline. And that the big crash isn't even here yet. Well, first of all, I want to enlighten you that the, the big crash is already present. It's already happening. Now, it's not done, but it has already begun. Okay? So, now with that being said, I, I've said it before several times, it's an optimal time to buy. But a lot of people don't see it that way. First of all, people continue to neglect to understand the fact that the stock market is a consumer driven market. It's consumer driven numbers. These numbers are not based on the company itself, but based on perceived value of said company. Now, if people look at a company and they think it has value, they buy into said company. If they look at a company and they see the stock as a potential opportunity to invest and make money, then they buy into the company. If people look at a company, we saw this multiple times with Tesla. Here's, uh, I love using Tesla and I love using Elon Musk, not because I am for or against, um, but because everybody knows about it. He's been such a prime headline for so long that when I talk about him, people are like, oh, I know. But when I talk about certain companies, like I'll bring up Coca-Cola or Ford, and people are like, huh? Like they don't really know, is Coca-Cola good? Is Coca-Cola bad? Is Ford good? Is Ford bad? Like people don't know. But Tesla is something that everybody knows about because Tesla and Musk have been headlines a lot. Why have Musk and, and Tesla been headlines? Not only are they as have they been doing innovative things for several years now, but... Musk is a bit controversial, and because he's controversial, some people love him and some people hate him, this makes great ratings.
That's what it comes down to. It's it, it makes make great ratings. So literally news and media and social media, people will talk about him when he's failing. People will talk about him when he's doing great. People will bash on him. People will give him praise because he's ratings. He gets attention. Like I said, part of the reason I talk about him. Not only does he get attention, but y'all know who he is. Okay, so now let's break down Tesla. What happened... Um, Four years ago or so, I think it was four years ago, um, he was on the Joe Rogan Experience. He is not a drug user. He is not a smoker. If you actually watched said podcast, you would know how he was offered a joint during the podcast. And he took a couple of drags off of said joint. And then he literally looked over at Rogan and was like, I don't even know if I'm doing this right because I've never smoked before. The thing is, is this became a meme. It became a meme on Twitter, on uh, Instagram, on Facebook. People were using still pictures of him and they were using it as a meme. They were using it as a meme. Not only that, but people took that uh, little clips of him blowing out smoke and then they 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 made little memes about it and like you know uh oh look uh Elon Musk is just full of hot air or, you know I mean they made silly stupid things that ultimately don't even matter but because that's what people do that's what people do on Instagram that's what people do on Facebook and Twitter and they make memes and sadly enough too many people don't understand that a meme by definition is just a parody it's just a joke it's not real Okay, but they made countless memes of Elon Musk. The crazy thing was, is within three days, his stock for Tesla dropped seven, seven point something points. Seven points is a lot. It dropped seven points because of memes. Some people started, and there was literally people on Facebook. Yep, I sold my Tesla. I'm not, in, I'm not, I'm not investing in a company that's ran by a pothead. He's not even a pothead. Um, like uh, some people literally posted on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, I sold my Tesla because I'm not, um, I'm not going to be investing in a company who the CEO doesn't take things seriously. How does he not take things seriously? Because he was on a podcast and he took a drag and. Then afterwards, he expressed that, look, I've never done this before. I don't really know how this works. I'm not really interested in doing it again. Um, he's a grown man. You know, I'm not telling, I'm not advocating for people to experiment with drugs. I am expressing that his one isolated, you know, instance dropped his stock. That's how fickle the market is. Because people will take, now, when it comes to things like Ford, uh, Coca-Cola, these companies don't have that. Um, these companies don't have that fluctuation because they're not in the media. They're not Tesla and Elon Musk. McDonald's um, doesn't have as much fluctuation, but um, because McDonald's is really seen as a, a solid company. Um, but McDonald's is... Uh, everywhere. McDonald's is everywhere. There's there's certain stocks that are just kind of out there. And it's Starbucks. Starbucks is another one. Um, people bought into Starbucks and sold off their Starbucks and bought into Starbucks and sold off. And they've done it for the most silliest of reasons. And you know, at the end of the day, can I really say they're silly? Ah, you know, if it, if it in any way um, reflects or negatively impacts who you are and your stance on things. And you're like, I really can't back this company. Okay, who am I to say you're wrong? I've told you all that before. Absolutely, you know, don't compromise yourself for an investment. Don't compromise yourself for money. But if you bought into a company, should you sell it off just because the CEO does something you disagree with or dislike? Well, I don't know. I can't say that you should do that either. It's really a gray line, and at the end of the day, nobody can tell you what to do. You have to go with your gut. You have to go with your instincts. You have to go with, you know, most important two things: is it, how's it going to affect my money? How's it going to affect my, or how's it going to affect my money and my investment, my bottom line? Really, um, am I going to make or lose money off of this? 
And the other thing is, does it compromise who I am? If it doesn't, if, if you're into it, then just, you know, go with it. Um, now, like I said, so lots of people sell off for different reasons. And with that comes fluctuation in the market. And so right now, it's all over the media everywhere that the stock market is crashing. So when you look, we, you don't know when, you don't know when Pelosi bought into her stocks, right? Okay, so if she bought in, let's say she bought into Tesla early. Let's say she was smart. Let's say she had a hot tip. Let's say she just had a wise friend that told her, you know what? I think this Tesla's gonna be big. So let's say, she, let's go back to like 2019. She bought into Tesla one back in 2019. And she put in, I don't know, let's say $50,000. $50,000. Hell, let's say she put in $100,000. Who knows? Depends on what value she bought in at. But let's say she bought in at 100, right? And then now, those stocks, or by last year, that stock value was up to a million dollars, right? 100,000 went to a million, that's not unheard of. Now let's say that million dropped to 500 and she sold it off. That is considered a $500,000 loss. But she made 500 off of 100. So when it really breaks down to it is, she actually earned $400,000 because she had that investment for long enough. Now, I don't know that. I don't know how much she invested and I don't know when she invested, but neither do any of you. And that's what I'm saying is people are only looking at, well, the stock market dropped. There's a $500,000 loss. She took the deal and got out, but she cut her losses. Maybe, maybe she didn't. Same thing with PayPal, same thing with CRM, same thing with Roblox, like these different companies. If she had bought in early enough and bought in at a low enough price and that money went from here to here and then she sold it here, she still made a profit. So she sold, it's still called selling for a loss. It's still looked at as selling for a loss. If you don't know, because that's the thing. Now, she knows that she didn't sell for a loss, but the speculative, the narrative that people wanna push, you don't really know. You don't really know. Now, then there's the fact that Pelosi has been under the gun. Pelosi has been one of many. And as I said, I am not here advocating for or against her. If you dislike her, if you like her, that's all, all that's on you. I don't care. I am strictly talking stock market and money here. So, she's been under the gun for a hot minute. A lot of politicians have, but she's definitely been one who's had a target saying, oh, she did all this, you know, she knew these things and that's why she bought in. And then a lot of people are saying, well, all these politicians shouldn't have this big of stakes in these companies and this and that. So people are getting angry on social media about politicians and how it's unfair that politicians are even allowed to have a stock portfolio, which I can't say. To me, it's a gray line. It's a very fine line to walk because how are you a politician who can influence policy that could affect said companies and you have a stake in said companies. Now, at the end of the day, you could recuse yourself from um, passing legislation on certain policies. Hey, this policy is gonna affect my company. I gotta take a step back and y'all gotta vote on that. I recuse myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm, now they, they don't do that though. They don't do that. So when it comes down to it is a politician who's implementing legislation that affects a company that they're invested in, is that fair? Is that right? Is it wrong? Like I said, I think it's a gray area. I think there are people who are capable of being honest and doing the right thing, 
But at the same time, we're all human. And so are you going to have a biased nature? Like if you believe in, you know, Tesla, if you believe in the idea of electric cars and there's a pot and you're, so you, you okay, let's scenario here. You believe in electric cars, right? You believe in saving the environment and you believe that electric cars are beneficial. Some people believe that electric cars are detrimental to the environment, that, that it's, uh, that it's a ruse. Um, but like I said, this is just a scenario. I'm not pushing politics. Let's say that you believe in saving the environment. Let's say you believe in electric cars are beneficial for the environment. Okay. So you buy into Tesla. Okay. Then you become a member of Congress. Mm. So you still believe in electric vehicles, right? You still believe in saving the environment. You believed that long before you bought into the company. That's why you bought into the company. So are you being genuine when you push that legislation? Maybe. Now, if you bought into a company because your cousin told you, hey man, look, I think this is gonna be a big deal. You gotta get in. It, you, don't wanna, you don't wanna be the last guy to get in. You gotta get in while the getting's good, right? So you buy into this company. You don't really know anything about it, right? You don't really know much about the company other than your cousin told you it's a good thing. You don't know much about the stock market. You take the tip, you take the advice, you buy in. You buy in with, I don't know, whatever. You take your bonus that year and buy in, right? A couple thousand bucks. Then you take those few thousand bucks and as it continues to grow over the next couple of years, that's great. You're so excited. Then you get into Congress and then it's like, oh, well, what company did you get into? What well, happens to be a pharmaceutical company? Hmm. So when legislation comes before you and it affects that pharmaceutical company, the one that you honestly knew nothing about before your cousin told you it was a good idea to buy in, are you going to be genuine and become informed and learn completely unbiased and choose which side to be on? Is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. See, so that's where you walk that line. It depends your motive from buying into the stock in the first place. Was it about money? Or did you believe in it? And if you believed in it, then is your motives for p trying to pass legislation still genuine? Maybe. Like I said, it's a fine line. And you can believe it or you can disagree with it. That, that, that's irrelevant to this particular point. The point is, is do we know what's happening with the stock market? I think there are signs that we can see. Do, is what Pelosi did evident to what's happening in the stock market? No, it's not. It means nothing because she could have taken a win and we just don't know. She, it, it's on, it's documented that she took a loss, but Where's the validity and credibility behind these documents and how thorough is this? And um, is it really taking into consideration the drop in the market this quarter? And that's the law she's taking? Because some people look at it like that. Some people don't care about what happened from the time you invested till now. They look at it one quarter at a time. So if you're looking at it one quarter at a time, well, yeah, she lost a shirt this quarter. But since her initial investment, did she? Mm, no. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but neither do you. And that's the thing, neither do you. And so then there's the other thing. <laughs> These variables, I'm telling you, they're, they're really endless. So here's another one. If, with the consideration of what's happening in the stock market and in the economy in our nation right now, if you take all these things into consideration, there's an economic decline. There's a bit of a struggle. We're in a recession. Yeah, I just said it. We're in a recession. Those of y'all who continue to post these headlines, a recession is on the way. No, you've missed the mark, buddy. The recession's already here. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, we're in a recession. Stock market is in a decline. Now, some stocks are thriving. There are some that are thriving. And some people's um, portfolios... Ooh, they're looking sad and scary. Some are doing all right. Mine's doing okay. Mine's doing good. 
My partner says I'm a I'm a <laughs> I'm an exception to the rule. I don't know. I think there are lots of things that lots of people can do differently and to really evaluate the stock market differently and really diversify just the right amount. Um, but anyways, let's just say with all these things in the economy right now, she's heavily vested, right? She's got, I mean, she took a $2 million loss. So if she took a $2 million loss, she's heavily vested, right? So she's in there. Okay. She's got all this money in there. The economy's in a decline. We're in a recession. The stock market is plummeting. If she understands, or if she has advisors who understand, which I can't imagine she doesn't. I can't imagine that she doesn't have some advisors that really understand what's going on and that don't understand how the stock market actually works. So when you take that into consideration and you know that the stock market is not driven by literal value but perceived value by said consumer. So we take that all into perspective right now. So that means selling high and buying low is really what it's all about, especially if you're not a long-term seasoned trader or not trader, investor, like someone like Buffett or Munger. These are guys who buy for decades. They don't buy so in two months they can sell. No, no, they have done that. Of course they've done, everybody's done that. You buy into something, then it kind of hits this high and you're like, I think it's a fluke, I'm gonna duck. Then you buy into something and you're like, you know what, it's not going the way I thought it was gonna go. Might be time to duck. But at the end of the day, most of these seasoned investors like I said, they're going to buy in and they're looking for the long-term gain. They're like, you know what? I'm getting dividends every year. I'm getting dividends every year. That's what Buffett's, that's what, that, man, that's his bread and butter, baby, is dividends. He's, the man is living off of dividends, okay? I'm not thinking that Pelosi's that person. And I'm thinking that there's a lot of people like Pelosi that are not that person. They're not trying to live off of dividends. They're trying to make quick money. Now you say, well, she just took a loss. How's she making quick money? Okay, let's, let's break that down. If she sells at a $2 million loss, how much did she walk away with? I don't know. But let's just speculate that it was a 50% loss. It's a pretty big loss. There's most companies aren't at a 50% loss. So let's, like I said, let's just speculate it's a 50% loss. Uh, the biggest companies right now are at a like 38, 36, 32. They're in the 30s. And 30s are huge, 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 huge. So let's just speculate for argument's sake and for simple mathematics. Say it's a 50% loss. So let's say she sold all five of these at a 50% loss. And so she lost 2 million. So that means she walked away with 2 million, right? It's 50% loss. She lost $2 million. She sold $4 million worth of stock. She got $2 million. Okay. So she's got $2 million sitting right now, right? And as she sold these, now this is kind of a level of manipulation, but it's completely legal. And if y'all want to speculate that she knows what's going on, let's say she sold this stocks. She got $2 million in her pocket, right? As she's sitting on. As she's sitting on that two million. Because she sold off these. She sold off two million of stock. That's going to cause a dip. Two million is a good amount. Now not much. It's going to cause a little tiny dip. But the thing is. Is other people sold off. That's that dip. There you go. And then some other people heard she sold off. So they're like. She knows something. And before you know it, so many people have sold that this has plummeted the value, which is a crash. So maybe she's helping the crash or encouraging the crash, or maybe she's just playing chess, thinking moves ahead. If I sell now before the crash, 
I take my most, the highest wins, right? The highest gains right now, sell right now. Then it drops even lower. Then it drops even lower. Then it drops even lower. When it drops so low, then it buy back in. Buy back in and then it's gonna go back up. So she buys back in when it's incredibly low, right at the depth of the crash, right? She didn't really lose anything then. She played chess. Some people don't play stock market like that. Some people do. Some people are good at playing the stock market like a game of chess. They sell high, they buy low, they're watching, they're like, this is going up. I'm gonna go ahead and sell right now. I know it's gonna dip, and when it dips, I'm gonna buy back in, and then it'll go up again. And they keep doing that with the same stock. That is what trading is. Trading is literally not holding on to it, but keeping it just for long enough to make your money and then getting out, and then getting back in when it gets low enough so you can make some more money. Because you don't care about the stock. You don't care about the company. You care about the capital. Like I said, it's, so for some people, it's hard to wrap their head around that when they're saying, well, she just took a huge loss. Yeah, but if you think an inevitable crash is coming and the crash is going to be way bigger than what it is right now, then getting out now is just saving face so you can get back in when it's low enough. Now, like I said, again... We don't know any of this. All of this is simply speculation. So what is she doing? We don't know. It honestly, when it comes down to it, could be a little of all of it. She could be cutting the losses. She could be saving face with all the, the masses. Some people, why would she do that? Maybe she just wants to. Maybe she just wants people to believe that she's doing the right thing. Who knows? So maybe she's getting out while she can, she's cutting the losses, saving face, playing a game of chess with the stock market so she can get back in later when it's at its really lowest. There's all these things to consider and there's all these things that come into play. Too many variables for us to know. So unless she sat down and literally explained, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is why I'm doing it, and this is how I'm doing it, and if she was 100% honest about all those things, and we would have to 100% believe and take every word that she says for truth, otherwise we'll never really know. Even after the fact, people try to look back and say, oh, I can see where this politician did this. I can see where this president did this. I can see where this congressman. No, you don't. You see some things that seem to appear as though this is what happened, but you don't really know. Sometimes things just happen. Sometimes it's the best choice out of multiple bad choices. Sometimes people are being malicious and it's something bad, but we don't know. So does she know something we don't know? I don't think so. I think based on everything I know, I wouldn't recommend everybody get out. But if they were playing a game of chess, ah, uh, maybe. Maybe it's not a bad idea. It just depends on how good you think you are. We're talking about $2 million worth of losses. And she could still come out ahead. Who knows? Take it for what it is. All right, I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has been a little bit enlightening. Um, please stay tuned. Please leave your comments below. Let's discuss. Let's get this dialogue going. I uh, appreciate all y'all who've been showing me love, likes, comments, uh, reaching out um, via Instagram, uh, TikTok, Twitter, things like that. It's been really great. Facebook, um, y'all can find me anywhere, B and Corey B. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate it. And let's keep moving and let's keep growing. And I hope this has helped y'all understand a little bit of the variables that go into the stock market and why people do the things they do. And it's not always as malicious as it seems. Maybe it is. Who knows? But it's rarely ever as simplistic as, oh, well, it's just this. And it's almost never just that. It's almost always a few different things. All right. It's your boy. I hope you all have a blessed and awesome day. Let's keep learning and growing. Until next time. 
Be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ding your bell, get your notifications. I'm out.